Uh, let's talk to Mal Fletcher, who is a social commentator. Morning, Mal. Morning, Mike. What should we do? Oh, well, I think this whole debate is, is, has a few wrong assumptions built into it, and if we can sort those out, we can make some decisions. I think the first one is that most people aged over 75 are somehow rolling in money, and I think Anne previously touched on this idea. The truth is many people in that demographic struggle to get by on little more than the government pension, and denying them a free licence would, I think, cut them off from much-needed interaction with the outside world. They're not in a position to pay for subscription services, many of them, and means-testing people in that age group would simply create another layer of bureaucracy which in turn increases our costs and therefore taxes for everyone else. So that's one of the wrong assumptions we're making in this. So what do we do? Well, Does the BBC week, just take it on the chin then? And, <laughs> and, and the cost of funding this uh, yeah. will, will take a fifth of the entire budget. Right, and I think that there's the issue of generational poverty, which is an, a separate issue that we could talk about later if you want, but there is another assumption in this, that it's an either-or proposition, that giving free licences for people on very low incomes, and I stress the very, and for people over 75s, is somehow mutually exclusive. It's not necessarily so. The government should be thinking maybe about doing some of the, the, the two of them at the same time. The cost of doing it could, at least in part, be covered by the new digital revenue tax proposed in the budget, uh, if that tax was large enough. We've got these huge tech companies making enormous amounts of money through advertising, selling our data, and paying very little in terms of corporate tax. In 2016, Facebook, Facebook reportedly made £800 million in the UK and paid just £5 million in tax. Now, the digital tax on companies like Facebook, and there's a number of them, could be used to cover additional free licences for people who really deserve them without necessarily taking them away from pensioners who can't who can ill afford to be out of touch yeah except the government have done this thing where they've, they've said that in two years time in 2020 um this is nothing to do with them um it, it's devolved to the bbc and the bbc decides what to do when it comes out of the bbc's budget well, I can't see that, that separating government from BBC is a, real, a realistic proposition because the BBC is a public service broadcaster. It can't be treated like Netflix. It can't be left to its own devices, and it can't be left without accountability. Uh, it is a public service broadcaster, and unless we want to see a situation which they have in the United States with their public service broadcaster, which is paid purely by subscriptions, and then it is from people who can afford it, then we've got to have a licence fee, and the government has to administer that. It can't just palm off responsibility to the BBC itself. Um, and I think, look, there's another assumption here about generational poverty, which is not just an economic problem, it's a mindset problem. When you have two, three or more generations of kids raised on state support, it understandably creates a mindset that everything I need can be provided with little or no effort on my part. And who can blame some of these young people for thinking that way? It's a situation, though, that most British people, I think, would find unfair, and rightly so. And in cases of generational poverty, people need skills training, of course. They need personal and practical support, including in non-financial ways, to get on the ladder towards some sort of self-sufficiency over time. In the meantime, yeah, let's provide them with licence fees if they're under a certain line, but ensure that there's some accountability and some practical mechanism in other ways mm. to lift them out of reliance. But if you're on a zero-hours contract and you're going to a food bank and if you've got a family to feed, surely you deserve a free television licence as well. Well, if you're on a zero-hours contract, that's, a, that's another huge issue that needs to be dealt with separately to the licence fees. What I'm saying is we're bundling all these things into this one debate about licence fees. In some cases, they're separate but related issues, and they're big enough to be, to be dealt with separately. Uh, zero-hours contracts is a huge problem in our society, but the, the, the amount that uh, impact that it, that it has on licence fees, I think, is relatively small. We just need to sort that one out on its own. All right, Mal, thank you, Mal Fletcher.